One of the um, misconceptions with Wu Sabat, because a lot of the times you see the men up front, you see the men teaching, and people think the woman's role is, it's not like Islam or, you know, religion where you suppress the woman. In fact, we recognize that the woman is the goddess and we come from her. So in Wu Sabat, um, even when you see the master teacher in videos on the land, our 476 acres of land we had known as Tamaray, you would always see him accompanied by women because he realized that the women had been suppressed, which meant that our entire nation was actually not operating at full capacity. It's like he, he explained it like, you got one arm tied behind your back. So he recognized that we had to work together, recognizing that the woman was first, because you have people say, Oh, no, but if the man didn't put the seed in the woman, how would she have the baby? And we do recognise that you need both. However, we recognise that we come from the woman. We're not saying that the woman is more important than the man, or the man is more important than the woman, because even in ancient Egypt, you see the pharaohs, they rule together side by side, both male and female. So, yeah, what would you say... Yeah. The woman's role is in the Sabbath. Um, so, um, I don't know if you've noticed this, uh, but this is called the Majal. Um, and as we've went through the schools, this was known as an asset braid. So as an asset braid, we were always taught that we had to become an asset to our society. It means that being the first nurturer, um, we were the first to read to our children, to feed them, to teach them, and so on and so on. So. As a female, it represented the pillar uh, that held up the temple and it was for us to acknowledge that we also have different abilities in terms of left and right brain. Mm. So it means that one side for the feminine was more imagery and then the other side of the brain being more an analytical. Mm. But as you know, is that we don't use the full capacity of our brain. So what we have to do is balance that out and be able to use our brains um, equally so that we have the full um, 100, so to speak. Mm. So as a feminine, it is really important that we acknowledge that even though we were suppressed, um, we have to be mindful and aware that that has to change and that's both for male and female. Mm. So it's not like now we say the woman is first, the woman is goddess, that she's now going to come and suppress us because we did that to her. And this is why even in religion, in Islam, you know, the men are up front, the women have got to walk behind. Um, in the church, it was only very recent times where you know, women were allowed to become, you know, bishops and become, you know, pastors and ministers and things like that. And the world is changing now. You see that there are more women in prominent positions, even in government, um, in just around the world. So it is the woman's time to rule, but not in the sense of suppressing the man. Yeah, so, yeah, I just wanted yeah. to kind of like emphasize that. Yeah, it's about mm. working in tandem. Working together, you know, hand in hand, 50-50, male and female. Do you think, um, in terms of a woman submitting to a man, because we're living in a Western world and a lot of females, they view that word of submission as if, because of, as we've mentioned already, women have been suppressed, you know, in government, in religion, in the world, that in Wu Sabat, um, when we say submit, we're not... I just want to know what your view is on terms of women submitting to the man. Okay, so when this question first came out, I remember a teaching by a master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z. York, bringing us to the awareness of the tango, which is a dance that is very expressive. It's a dance where she may fall or seem as if she's going to fall and the male catches her and vice versa. So taking into account of that, I think that you have to, as a feminine, be very mindful of the male or the um, partner that you choose. But it's about communicating with your partner to say that, well, to move forward, to work together, there's got to be that balance. Mm. Okay, there's got to be that trust, there's got to be that security. So that all comes about with communication, but it goes to show that the trust can be there it can evolve how um, 
both of you decide to communicate and look towards making a change to the future for mm. the betterment of humanity. So it's all about that working together and having that overstanding. Yeah, because one of the things that men, <laughs> being very masculine and, you know, the whole testosterone, we don't tap into our feminine or feminine nature. And you do have that because you have the X and the Y chromosome. The X is female and the Y is male. And you have both sides. So there's nothing actually wrong with you admitting and doing the things that, you know, a, a female would do. Because, you know, men are brought up to be so tough. Men don't cry. Men are not sensitive. You know, we try to, we've been grown, right, based on sort of society to always hold everything in. And this kind of can lead to a lot of mental issues. But when you're with the right partner and you're both able to work together, you recognise that, like the female, she's also got male within her, you see. So it's about balance at the end of the day. It's yeah. about balance, isn't it? But um, Yeah, it mm. is about balance. But also what's very interesting is the master teacher brought to our attention that the um, XX chromosome um, has, a, has a more genetic material. Because if you look at the size of the X compared to, you can see that the Y is a defective gene from the X um, chromosome mm -hmm. and so therefore you can see that the woman has mammary glands which is what you used to feel you would feed, feed the child with um, and um, it's ineffective in the male and etc etc so we have to um, be mindful and be aware to enhance the fact that we do have that extra um, genetic material more so than the male. Mm. And when I touched on the males being more prominent as teachers in Musabat, again, I always say there are female teachers. And one of the things the master broke down was that there are certain aspects of our doctrine or information or questions that people ask that although he has attempted to answer the question many times, it keeps being asked. And he recognised, he said, even though I can teach you about how a female can have a child. He said, I personally, as a male, cannot have a child. And so I will never be able to teach it to you in the way that a female would teach you. So he said that he recognised that because this question kept coming back over and over again, that um, a female had to answer it. And there are many female teachers. So why would you say, or what's the reason for the, the female teachers of also about not being as upfront as they should be. Like we um, mentioned before about sort of the women being sort of having to walk behind the male, she has to come to that realisation that she needs to be upside alongside of the male um, teaching. She does have the ability if we tap into it, because like I said, we are the first teachers to our child. Mm. We are the first feeders. We, we generally pay the bills. We sort of multitask, we mm. do all of that, which is no different to using those skills in wider society. And what you just said there is really interesting because um, in other races, the female is put into like managing the house, managing the money, you know what I mean? Like if you look at the Chinese or even the Caucasians or the European, they have no problem with letting the woman manage, you know what I mean, the finances and things like that. In our community, you don't tend to see that as much. Again, do you have any views on that? Well, there's, there's a number of, one of the main things that I would acknowledge is that and the environment that you know our grandparents came into had a had a significant change on the relationships the mm. relationship dynamics over time through what they went through it had a breakdown on the family structure mm. so it gave the woman more of the push towards being able to get homes being able to get the finances and leaving the male to feel somewhat um, subdued in the in not being able to provide mm. for the family. So that had a significant, a, a significant detriment Impact, on, yeah. the, on, on the family dynamics. Mm. So it's something that we have to be aware about. I've got a really interesting question to ask you. A lot of um, black, using the word loosely, um, 
male say that they find dealing with a black woman very difficult because, you know, the black woman is very aggressive. Um, uh, there's a particular word I'm looking for, I can't find it now. But where do you think this comes from? Because they, you know, you see a lot of black males who end up going to other races in terms of taking a partner or a wife, or when they become successful, they seem to like go for Caucasians. Um, you know, we can name a lot of examples. How do you think that has come about on what's well, the reason? I think that's like what I've just um, uh, did my best to explain. When there's the, the breakdown in the family and then the woman has to be, or is trying to be both mother and father, mm. um, that's where the masculinity can evolve. Like, but saying that, I can give an example that when my grandmother lost her husband at 32, she had no choice but to be mother and father. Mm. So she was doing everything. So we didn't have a male role model in the, in the household. So that entailed her becoming very strong, but mm. she didn't have any choice, mm. you know, that, and that has also filtered down to the feminine within that, in, within that household. We're very, very independent. And sometimes male um, or the masculine can become very, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, emasculate? Yeah, well, feel emasculated, but it's not that because where, for example, I've become very independent, like I can do menials around the house, etc., etc. When you sometimes, when you don't allow a man to take the lead on those things, they mm. can feel um, that like they're you're doing not, their job, basically. Their, their job, yeah, mm. for them. So um, it's just about being mindful. I think and where does this angry black mindful. woman thing comes from? Well, we have to be. How can I say it? Angry black woman, I mean, she's had to endure a lot. Mm. You know, if you look at our ancestors, you know, what they've had to endure, you know, um, it is a lot. And like I said, again, with the structure breakdown, mm. you know, and having to do those, um, bring the family up um, on your own, it's, it's stressful. Yeah, because I mean, um, obviously, like slavery and the way how the man was by the Caucasian or the you know Spanish or whoever was carrying out the slavery, they were emasculating the man. Um, they were basically making the black man look like he's worthless in front of the woman in terms of some of the you know atrocities that you know took place. So um, and then as we came or come to today, a lot of the black women is given opportunities. You know, like single parents tend to get more benefits or get housing and get certain things which kind of make the man feel like he's not a provider. Um, would you agree that that's part of the reason why black women have become more, like you said, independent and then the man's kind yeah. of looked down on? Like I said, sometimes it's, it's not through choice. It's because she has no um, other option to, mm. um, like like I said, be, be mother as well as father. So... Mm. That, that's where I think a lot of that stems from. And what's the solution, would you say? It's mindfulness, it's having an overstanding. Society has set that up on purpose. Mm. They know what they're doing. They broke down the family structure right. on purpose at, because they know what's going to happen tenfolds ahead mm. of um, what actually takes place. Yeah. So this was all by design. So we have to become mindful of that, that this was done by design and what solutions are we going to put in place mm. to keep the family structure together. It is so very important because we can see in today's society what is happening with our young people, mm. you know, not, by not having both the masculine and feminine energy together to grow that child up. Mm, mm. Okay, I see we've got some scrolls that over there. Um, do you want to touch okay. on any of them? Yeah. So what I would, um, Advi I recommend is that this is called um, the Gospel of Yanon on the Sacred Feminine. Now this talks about everything uh, that a woman should be aware of in terms of how she chooses her male, how she carries herself, um, 
how our practices, our rituals when we come together mm. um, to be partners um, in matrimony, um, our elder um, feminines and the the uh, advice that they come together as the elders to give us when there's issues that may possibly may arise during With that the union. Yeah, yeah mm. during that union, it gives us the physical attributes of a woman mm. and how to keep herself and hygienically clean. Um, it got everything um, about a feminine you can find in this scroll and I would recommend that. Mm. Yeah, okay. every feminine has that. Sacred, the sacred feminine, okay. This one is uh, a patarak, this is um, our way and the um, goddess creator, it talks about how obviously we gave um, birth to male and female on this planet, us being the first. Mm. Um, and um, it goes into why we should be very mindful about um, our partners, um, you know, based on the genetic mixing, etc. Mm. Um, it, it gives us a lot of information into that. Okay. What else do you have there? Just got a couple more. Okay. Yeah, unclean issues. Um, Nawapian uh, commandments on sexual violations. Um, planet Earth is woman. Mm. So sexual violations talks about as a Sabean feminine and masculine, what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. Mm. Um, again, unclean issues, what we put in our bodies, what we watch, um, just keeping our minds as pure as possible. Um, planet Earth is woman, again, um, you know, we gave birth to male and female. Um, masculine wouldn't be here <laughs> if we didn't give yeah. birth to them. So planet Earth is woman, that goes okay. into that. Is there anything else you would say to sisters that would look at you or Woosabat and want to yeah. get to know more and get involved? Or how, how do the sisters kind of get more involved? Um, well, um, Nishat.co.uk, uh, we have a, uh, a link on there if you wanted to become a member. But what I, be before that, what I would say is that if you are a feminine, if you are a female and you care about what's happening with us as a people, as humanity, and you want to make that change, then I would say Wusabat gives you the answers and the solutions to that mm. and how to apply that in your in your daily lives. Because as a feminine, um, I, I get very concerned about still in this day and time, you know, it came out that black women are four times still likely to die in childbirth. Um, you know, being in Croydon, the amount of black and black knife crime with our young people. Um, the list goes on, but more so that I know so many fantastic um, feminine that have all the skills that we discuss, mm. um, that can come together, that can work together to apply the knowledge of Rusabat to make that change. So, you know, if you are serious and you are concerned about, you know, wanting to see, make a difference to the environment that we live in, then come to class. Um, you don't have to come here physically, you can go online via Clubhouse, you can join us via Zoom mm. and you can listen in, you can ask your questions um, because I can say for myself that as a black um, feminine that when I came across Wusa Bat, it changed me for the better. For example, mm. you know, having that inferior complex about, you know, having a certain look, your complexion, mm. the hair that you have. When you understood about nine ether, when you understood about, you know, your genetics, where they came from, you wouldn't want any different. When you have a, 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 a wide um, knowledge um, mm. of, um, you Ooh, know, you Wusa are. Bat, yeah, mm. who and what we are, then you you wouldn't you'd think wow how did I get good <laughs> things like that do you know what I mean like yeah. where did that come from and again also because it was like being Nigerian and being Jamaican and having that I saw that complex like Jamaicans not liking Nigerians and Nigerians not and I'm a mixture of the two so it was like where did that come from and I goes 
we've been hoodwinked. Mm. Who's done this to us? Mm. So when I started reading Wu Sabat and getting the, the answers, I was like, no, not having it, not having it, you mm. know? So uh, it, I would definitely say feminine, if you are about wanting change for the better, then it's just these that are going to do it. Your own hands, we can work towards <laughs> making a change. So, so uh, no, no, I'm just finding it interesting because um, you seem to be very confident with the way your hair is. You've got your cultural, you know, bindi on, you've got your nose ring, you've got the unks. And when you see a lot of our sisters on the street, um, you know, a lot of them tend to bleach their skin. And you touched on that just now, bleach their skin, wear the blonde hair the green wigs, the, you know, and I'm not trying to obviously put anybody down, but you've touched on something which is about knowing your identity and being basically comfortable in your own skin and being who you are supposed to be. So again, I think that's a really important message. That's why I was laughing because I was like, how do you get that across to people? Because some, some men also have been indoctrinated to think that the lighter skin you are, that's what beauty is. The straight hair, the six for hair. And so men gen or women generally try to please the men. Because when you say to a woman, why are you wearing that? Or why do you? They'll say they're doing it for themselves. But us as men, a lot of the time we know, like you are looking for attention from the male. Do you know what I mean? So would you say that's true or not true? Because a lot of women will say that, but like it's the same thing like when a woman doesn't have a man they say men are overrated i don't really need a man i can you know and then when they do have a man <laughs> it's like it changes so i've stood a lot there but i guess i'm just saying like that confidence of being happy in your own skin and not wearing your yeah because um, it's, it's, it's about having the uh, the knowledge isn't it it's mm. like we've been given the knowledge about um you know it's for example, in school we were in science we were taught that um, dark eyes, curly dark hair, is a dominant gene. Mm. Like so, why therefore are we trying to go against the grain of what by nature we've been given su as mm. super superior? superior mm. Yeah. So it's like we've been again like we've been taught that the alternative mm. is better and. Unfortunately, I was one of those um, women, but like I said, when I came into Nawapu, when I came to Wooster Bat, um, again, I'm, my eyes were open. Mm. So, um, again, that's why I do encourage a lot of uh, feminine, especially from our community, to come in and to buy the scrolls and to read and to keep reading. Mm. Must stress that you have to read, and I hold my hand up too, but I do have find a day every day even if it's one page <laughs> to read um, something yeah, on yeah. Back. yeah yeah I mean um, one of the things um, I found when I started to see an increase in women wearing their natural hair or even just cutting it low and they still look you know beautiful and you would like I would go up to maybe say encourage the woman and say yo sis you know I like your hair or I like your haircut and sometimes you get a very defensive kind of, do you know what I mean, response. And um, because they think you're trying to hit on them, or, do you know what I mean? But it's not that. I just think that the more men encourage or um, basically the women that are trying to be natural and the more they, they give them, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, compliment, yeah. Mm -hmm. The more they give them compliments, the more other women feel like, you know, actually it's okay to, to, to rock my hair natural or whatever, because the men, some men, ignorant men, who I was mentioning before, who watch the TV and there's a particular image of what beauty is, you know, the long weave and the straight hair and the light skin, they actually will look down on a woman that is wearing a natural or like not do you know what I mean? Representing the image of what they think is beauty. Yeah, it's called yeah. the spell, isn't it? <laughs> the it's spell, called, yeah. Called the spell, they're under the spell. And so for me, like I said, Wusabat helped me break that spell. Mm. Yeah. So my name is Bastat Nafatat Karanku or Amanda Bailey. Um, I'm one of the co-founders here at Nashat. Um, again, here to establish a community where we can encourage people to come in and learn um, about Wusaba, our way of life, Patarak, um, our rituals, our practices, 
um, and for those that really want to make a difference, make a want to change.